In this video, we'll be using GeoGebra to analyze cubic polynomials, so I'll start by entering that. And a cubic polynomial, in some senses, is just a function where the highest variable on an exponent is the cubed power. So perhaps I can enter in something like, I don't know, 3 space for multiplication, x cubed, right, minus 2 space x squared, plus 0.2 space x, oops, 0.2 space x for 0.2 times x minus 1. Right? When I do this, I create a cubic polynomial. But maybe you want to look different. And at this point, of course, you can ask students to go back and, and edit some features here of the polynomial. What if I made this first coefficient smaller, like 0.5? And then here they can see, oh, well, if I do that, the shape changes in some interesting way. What if I change this to plus 2x squared instead of minus? Right, so plus 2x squared. Notice it shifts up. So already by playing with this, students can get a sense of how the cubic polynomial works. But here we can set up a couple of other things. What if I have the variable r right, equal the root, not roots. I was doing that before, just type in the singular root of f. Notice what it does, let's just zoom in there. When we type in the root of f, what are we doing? We're calculating all of the roots of the function and notice, notice that it actually places them right out and it even gives them indexes, so root 1, root 2, and root 3. And you can find their exact value by clicking on them, go into object properties, and display the name and value of that point and you'll see it or you can see it over here in the algebra window. The next thing we want to do is set another variable, e, is equal to the extremum. 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 I think I'm saying it right. The extreme points, the, the max and min points um, of this parabola. Now when students enter this in, um, they can type in e equals the extremum of f. And they'll see what happens. e1 up here and e2. They might notice that the graph's gone forever in both directions, both up and down. However, the extremum here are turning points in this section right in the middle. They might say something, at least to that effect, because they're starting to look at this relative max and min and starting to make sense of all this. The last thing you might have them do is look at the inflection point. So you can have another variable, i, equals the inflection point of function f. And then this point i pops up. And that's a good time to ask students what they think that might mean. And they might reason as to where, based on where it is, that it represents some kind of interesting symmetry point in our parabola. Um, it could be the point between the first extremum and the second, the max and the min. There are lots of properties here that students can look at just by setting this up. All right, hope that helped.